I'm Buzz Bishop with Christina Aguilera. This is the world album premiere of Christina's Back to Basics. Four years since you've done this. Y'all set to put the machine in motion again? I'm very, very excited to be back again. Yes, it's been a year and a half of the making of my new album, Back to Basics, a double CD. So um, lots of material, lots of new things to say, and um, can't wait to get back at it. Now, when you picked up your Grammys, when you're winning all those ones for Stripped, you were very thankful about being honored for such a personal record. Mm -hmm. uh, wh what does this one mean to you? Um, you know, I always try to incorporate a lot of, you know, personal heart and soul into, into my, my lyrics and my albums. That's why I kind of want to take four years or so, whatever it was, you know, some time in between records so that I come back with something new and meaningful to say so I can live life for a second to talk about it. And so many amazing things have, have happened to me in, in uh, in the last year and a half, you know, I got married last year, and just it's it's a good time for me. I'm I'm happier than I've than I've ever been. I'm more at peace than I've ever been, and much more than I was with even the last record. But I had to get, I had to experience that place and and that that what I did with the last record to be able to even get here. And who knows what the next one will even be, um, for three years from now, you know. Um, but uh, I try to always come up with something new and different and this place that I've gone with this record is kind of uh, in, in the past. I've, I'm very inspired by the 1920s, 30s and 40s and so I wanted to make a record that kind of had all those throwback good elements um, of old soul, blues and jazz music but combining it with kind of a modern day twist in some of the songs and in other ones like with Linda Perry, you know, co-writer of Beautiful, we were able to really go there and, uh, and go there authentically and organically. No cover songs, no no samples or anything, we just really went there to recreate the old. Uh, you, you've been talking about your old school influences right since the first interviews with Jeannie in a Bottle. You were talking <laughs> about how much you love Etta James and, yes. and you've been promising ever since that you were going to put At Last on a record. Now you've, you've got that sort of sound. I mean, you sang At Last at your wedding. but I did. Uh, Unexpectedly, not playing. No, no, I, I realize that. Um, <laughs> are those real standards going to come out? Um, the actual covers of songs, um, you know, whenever I maybe in the future put out a live album, I'll incorporate At Last, which is my all-time favorite Etta James song. Um, but I just was able to do a, a, um, a photo shoot with her recently, and she had the most amazing things to say to me, and she was just an amazing person, so that was one of my dreams in life come true so that was really amazing and you know the whole feel of this record yeah it's 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 very dear to me because this is you know I think the root of all music is blues soul and jazz music and um, it's a really fun image to play around with kind of the old Hollywood glam that goes along with those eras so it's all kind of a really fun package to play with. All right, well, let's talk about some of the songs on the record. You, 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 you mentioned how happy and excited you were and being married and how excited. Yeah. I couldn't help when we were listening to some of the songs how they all seemed to point to how excited and happy you were about <laughs> with your husband. It's just like I, I wrote down the list here, and it's like, how many of them here? Uh, na nasty, naughty boy, pray, save me from myself, ain't no other man, understand. Are those all about Jordan? You know, he had a lot of lyrical influence, yes, in a lot of these songs. Um, but uh, Nasty Naughty Boy, that one kind of has the feel as if you, uh, I did that one with Linda Perry, as if you entered a 1920s burlesque club. And so it had a little naughty element to it. And uh, I think that one, per se, you know, you're thinking of your husband, but also I, <laughs> I actually wanted to uh, have it um, be, lend, I wanted it to lend itself to anybody that had a partner that they wanted to maybe, you know, wives, girlfriends can do a personal little little uh, entertainment, you, know, you put, put on a little show for their, you know, hubbies or boyfriends or whatever, and um, that goes for anyone for that matter. Um, you know, it's a, it's a good theme song um, for certain things, and, um, you know, that one in particular is just a, kind of a tongue-in-cheek, I just walked into a 1920s burlesque club kind of a feel. Um, but, yeah, he had a lot of um, influence on a lot of the things I had to talk about. I mean, my God, you know, he... He's been a big part of, of my life, you know, and, and will be for the rest of my life. I mean, it's, he's been amazing, you know, it's strong, strong support. But also I wanted to not make it so personal on, on the majority of these songs that people couldn't relate to them. You know, I think everyone can relate to, you know, love to some degree and, and you know, hopefully, you know, um, people that can have that special person, they can kind of relate kind of how meaningful these lyrics are to me and whatnot, but um, they all have a different twist to them, though. You know, they all, don't all talk about straight, cut-and-dry love, quote-unquote. 
from up above, sent from, you know, all these corny right. things, because you think, oh, I love song, uh, you know, whatever. I do anyway. I always, you know, didn't want to get caught up in the fluff of writing love songs. But, and, um, and I think we, we twisted them in ways where they're not just that cut and dry, but it's, it's definitely a good time, you know, it's, and it's a good time to just feel good. I wanted a lot of the music just to have a feel-good element to them. In the GQ article, it talks about Save Me From Myself, and, yeah. and you say some really wonderful things about Jordan, about how he's your rock and, and he's the center. Right. And then at the same time, when you listen to the song Thank You, you're talking, you, you put your fans into that record, right. and they're talking about how you're the one who's strong and you're the one leading them through. So are you the alpha female that your fans think you are, or do you really need your man that much that you lean on? Like, which one is um, it? No, I think it's great that I have that support and that someone. Um, but yes, I am a strong woman. I'm a strong female. And, um, and uh, the, the great thing about you know, being in love for me and, 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 and whatnot is because I don't have to feel like I need to change myself at all to either lessen myself or some someone's ego because that you know it's a lot of times with in a case especially with a female you know who has you know success under her belt it's hard to find a guy that's not either intimidated by that or the spotlight or and that can really be there and support and, and who really gets me 150 percent so I would say a little bit of both you know I mean he makes me I think he gives me elements of of um just love and support that make me stronger you know but um all in all you know um uh, you know, it's, it's, it's a good combination. It's a good balance for me. Right. I'm Buzz Bishop. We're with Christina Aguilera. This is the world album premiere of Back to Basics. There seems to be two very different vibes on, on this record. You have yes. the DJ premiere thing that is 20s, 30s, 40s, yes. and then you have Linda Perry, which is, to me, well, it, can we say it, traditional Christina sound. It sounds very much like stripped. Is it are they t talk talk about the two sides? Yeah, I'm glad you noticed that. Within you know, you didn't get to hear everything. No, we didn't yes, hear everything you, yet. you heard clips of um, a, a few cuts, which is so hard for me to part. You know, with not showing my whole album. Um, but yeah, there are two different worlds. It's, it's a two disc album. The first disc deals with more you know um, elements of old throwback sound, like old horn blares. Um, uh, different bits and pieces, sound bites from, you know, kind of artists that I love from the past, you know, old gritty record vinyl sounds, um, scratches and things to do with that. Um, that came from more of the beat-driven producers like DJ Premier, uh, Mark Ronson, um, you know, guys that make more beat-driven tracks and use um, certain elements of sampling and, and chopping and Dice, sli slicing and dicing them up to make something completely new. Um, and then there's disc two that deals with um, my God, all these amazing songs that Linda, Linda and I were able to really go and uh, on some of these songs we really went there to this kind of organic and authentic place of, of old blues and jazz. You know, one of the songs, I Got Trouble, sounds as if it was actually recorded in the 1920s using an old vintage microphone, covering it with an old ratty cloth and, you know, to get that kind of muffly, gritty, old effect. Another one, Nasty Naughty Boy, as we have an audience on there, it sounds as if you just walked into a 1920s burlesque club and I'm accompanied by a huge, you know, brass band and, and whatnot behind me, big band feel, and it's, and it's really, really cool. And then we've got some, um, some uh, circus elements in there that will lend themselves really amazing whenever I, I get to incorporate some of those visual aspects on, on tour of a 1920s circus feel where Linda Perry is actually acting as the barker, um, getting ladies and gentlemen to step right up, step right up into this world. And that's kind of the introduction for the second CD that really is all live music, you know, Candyman being another one that's all live horns and, and really kind of a fun swing vibe of... Uh, kind of the Andrews Sisters, Boogie Woogie Bugle Boy, but modern day version, kind of that's what it's influenced by. So very exciting stuff. And when you talk about going on tour, we're here in what, Blue Note? Christina yeah, Aguilera at the Blue Note? There's a promotional tour that we're doing before my, my big next worldwide tour for Back to Basics that um, we're, we wanted to start kind of like with the, with the vibe of what, and vibe and feel of what the record's about. And I wanted to go do... Um, a tour in the country of uh, old jazz and kind of blues clubs, and yes, the Blue Note in New York is one of them, um, where I wanted to kind of get an, a more intimate environment, almost like uh, an environment, and set it up kind of where you could imagine uh, Billie Holiday getting up on stage and maybe performing, you know, kind of going along with the whole theme of the record, and that'll be incorporated in, in the video for Ain't No Other Man as well. Now, um, going in and doing the jazz 
thing. You're going to get the purists coming out and talking. There's an article that appeared in Jazz Times. They hadn't even heard your record yet. Mm. But in response to Nasty Naughty Boy, they say, it's doubtful she has a blues woman's gift for sexy understatement or sly <laughs> double entendre. Now, that was before they heard it. I'm sure if they heard it, they would take it back. But you are going to hear purists Absolutely. that are going to come after Christina Aguilera, quotation, Absolutely. air quotes, for doing a jazz record, quotation, mark. Really. Um, you know, you're always going to get skepticism and people that try to be negative and try to, you know, um, bring people down, you know, and I think, you know, kind of, uh, you know, coming from my pop quote-unquote background, genie in a bottle, etc., you know, you are going to get people that just want to be negative and criticized for no reason, but that's anything. You know, if I was going to do something completely standard in pop, they'd still have something to say. So i got to go with my gut. i got to go for what I'm really feeling and what really inspires me as an artist and as a musician and, and um, really just keep going there and pushing boundaries and limits, my own limits, and, and challenging myself for the future. Um, but I'm very proud of what this album was, was uh, to accomplish and, um, you know, don't knock it till you try it. And if you hear it and you don't like it, then turn the station. <laughs> <laughs> so questions about your voice. This is the biggest, most powerful voice in pop music history, I have said. <laughs> now, sure, you're born with it, but do you have to warm it up? Do you exercise it? Do you work it out the way, I don't know, Sidney Crosby has to practice his slap shot, or is it just a God-given ability all the way? Um, well, it starts out with a feeling and just, you know, a raw emotion for what I do. Um, but, I mean, I definitely, I think I, 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 um, I definitely try to warm it up before I'm about to go on stage and whatnot a good hour or so beforehand, just because it's kind of like any other muscle. It's like an athlete, if you're a runner, it's like you want to kind of warm up and loosen up your muscles a little bit before you go out there so you're warm and ready to play the game. So whenever I go on stage and right before I'm about to attack my performance, um, I want to make sure that I'm good and warm and ready to go out there and give the best I can. Well, we've only scratched the surface. This is a 24-track CD. It's almost mm. too much, Christina. It's going <laughs> to take us forever to get through and digest it all, but we are so glad and you're slow back. Slow portions. Thank After you. After four years, Thank it's good you. to have you back. I know. I'm excited. Back Thank to you. basics. Thank you, Christina.